Hello, here we go. Map produce and Hadoop part C when we finally get to Hadoop. And uh, let's get going. Um, too many arms. All right, so what in this first, there's still a set of slides here. We cover the overall architecture and ecosystem. Hadoop is powerful because of those 350 other soft systems I mentioned at the introduction to this whole slide set. There's just lots of other capabilities, databases, and uh, filters, and libraries, and things that work with Hadoop, SQL interfaces, and so on. So it has a nice picture of an elephant. Um, uh, Hadoop, um, uh, Apache tends to have reasonably nice names. Maybe they reflect the net generation or the millennials or something. And it was, came from Yahoo. It doesn't say this here, but it should. Yahoo invented Hadoop. Remember, Google actually devised it, but Yahoo, which is of course a competitor of Google, built Hadoop. And it's often actually that the number one company doesn't build the best open source system of a given type. Because if you're number two, or even worse, number five, you need to wave your flag in front of people. And you can sometimes do that by making the open source variant. Uh, I don't think Yahoo has too much role any longer with Hadoop. Well, actually, Yahoo sort of doesn't exist much any longer. Anyway, um, as I said, there's lots of other systems related to Hadoop, um, including most importantly the file system HDFS. And a scheduler yarn. And Hadoop has not as sophisticated as Spark, but it has a built in uh, fault tolerance model. And as we've stressed many times, the key point about MapReduce is that there are lots of applications that fit this architecture. And it's a very simple architecture. And when you have something simple, even if it's something more complicated, you could also do it, which many papers have been written saying more complicated approaches to Hadoop can be done. But they, don't, they sort of miss some of the point. And we're actually, the whole point about Hadoop is that it's simple. And the whole point about MapReduce is it's simple. All right, so here is, it's sort of a variant of the um, 350 software slides, but organized a little more um, uh, Structured fashion, in fact, is sort of the original version of that slide when we only had 40 instead of 350 um, uh, systems. And you can sort of see how it, it's sort of a variant also of the picture I got of the NIST use case with uh, data analytics at the top is the user, up here, user. And he's interacting with an orchestration system. Remember, we saw that in the first slide set for this group. Then we have these high level things, Shark, which is now Spark SQL, and various other um, high level systems, Pig, which is meant to integrate, what does integrate many uh, Hadoop runs together. Then we have these variants of Hadoop. Um, and we've already mentioned Giraffe, which is probably, uh, which is the graph version. These ones here are really for a different problem class, Storm, S4, Samsung, which Storm now replaced by Heron is the most important. Those are streaming systems. Hammer, Tear, Spark, a variance of, if you like, of, of, of Hadoop addressing uh, special cases or more uh, advanced cases. Uh, then we have to do some communications and reductions. That's what the reduce operator does. Sp Hadoop. Hadoop doesn't have any much. Just has these built in sorts and merges and shuffles, and it supports general reductions. It doesn't do any sophisticated communication. Spark does. And then we have uh, the data for Hadoop comes from, say, either directly from the file system, HDFS, this is down here, or it comes through a database subsystem, HBase, Cassandra, or Cumulo, or it comes from a SQL interface pouring data into the Hadoop. Then we have to man, this runs in a cluster and has to be managed by Mesos or Yarn or Condor or Talk or what have you. And then we need DevOps. Uh, 
system user I mean system defined software defined systems. Okay, there we are. That's the old version of the 350 um, package with a time when we could write it in a in a more clear fashion. Here's another one of my favorite slides that we produced. It tries to show how here and here classic map producers are dupe. And this is what uh, this is a incredibly important and it's either for action reductions or the case where there's no reductions. Called pleasingly parallel or map only. Some of the word map only is just what I use. Not many other people use it. I think it's quite a nice term. Um, anyway, it's pretty important. Over here we have Heron and Storm and Samsung and S4 streaming. Here we have Spark, where machine learning starts coming in. Here we have Giraffe and sort of a bit of Spark, but not so good. And Twisted Tools tries to do both of these. And we ignore this one over here, which is for some people use shared memory architectures rather than distributed memory. The vast majority of big data problems are done on what are called distributed memory, or, or um, um, which you, you do not. Or every you have a set of independent computers, each with their own memory, prob um, probably their own disks, and of course their own CPUs, and you distribute the job over those independent machines. They use the communication network to synchronize it. And as I've stressed, synchronization for Hadoop is not so important. All right, here's a, um, some, a particular example of the simplest map produce. I actually illustrated it already in words for the um, Higgs boson study of the CERN accelerator. Uh, for the Higgs boson study, you have all these events all on different disks scattered around the world. You wanted to see if you have a an anomalous collection somewhere. You do that by histogramming important quantities where the goal of the physicist is to find the right thing to histogram or the right selection criteria to, to put on the events to put on the histogram. And you just uh, accumulate the histogram over many different runs, which you do by doing a reduction. And then you do a reduction operation, which sums up all the events in the spin. So instead of having words, and you count the number of words, you have bins, and you count the number of entries in this bin. So the, the result of the basic map operation will be bin 0, 22, bin 5, 6, bin 8, 93, and so on. It will be a, a set of bins which will be the keys and the values with the number of entries into those bins. And um, in the case of uh, Instagram, as an example, we have lots of sums, lots of reductions. And the dupe has to be built to do lots of reductions. We even saw that for the word count. Every word has to be counted independently. So this is the Hadoop ecosystem, putting this all together. And uh, this lecture will do the map produce and HDFS only. Uh, <coughs> and if you like map produce, it's the programming model. The distributed programming system. <coughs> and this critical technology, which is actually probably, it's going to last longer than Hadoop itself. I think Hadoop will be replaced. You know, here's the dominant, I mean, it's already starting to get replaced by Spark. That will accelerate. But something which will probably survive is HDFS, the Hadoop distributed file system, because it's such a natural way. I mean, it may cost be HDFS plus plus or something, but HDFS is a critical concept to describe the way you store data distributed over the disks of many, many, many machines. So as I mentioned, there's an Apache. The Apache Foundation is an amazing invention, uh, which has produced hundreds and hundreds of different software systems. They stress community, because the concept of <coughs> Apache is a piece of software. You put the software in GitHub. Around that GitHub, you produce a community which commits software and improves it and tests it. And um, as I mentioned, the HDFS was effectively the Google file system. And um, 
Is this started some time ago, but 2004 was the famous paper. Here we have January 2006. Uh, we put in a dupe, and it started off as a subset of Lucene. Lucene was a search engine project. It's actually no longer nearly as famous. It's actually a pretty, still pretty important uh, piece of software. And um, obviously, it's now split off to become its own Apache project. Uh, like most of the big data software, it's written in Java. There's a slight trend away to fancy languages like Go and Scala, but uh, Java is still the dominant language used in the big data world. The people contributing are Yahoo, which sort of started it. Cloudera, which is a little company who, like Hortonworks, whose business is to take a dupe and support it. There's lots, and it, you know, in this world, you know, trying to find business models. The business model of building software proprietary and keep it to yourself tends not to be so easy because people want to, they don't want to be dependent on you. But the business model of uh, working on an open source project and then becoming an expert at deploying that open source project with other open source projects, that is a very successful business. It's a business model used by Red Hat for Linux, um, it's used to Zen. Issues for um, or by Hortonworks and Cloudera in this case. It's a very common model which will continue to be successful, I think. Here is the uh, current uh, architecture with Duke with a very high level and very large font size. We have a cluster. On that cluster, we have some sort of storage. We have a, a Duke file system which describes the files in a distributed fashion. We have YARM, which schedules the processes and tasks. And then we have the mappers and the reducers and the shufflers running under the, uh, on top of that. Here is an example, actually a simpler version of the earlier diagram. Here we have map, here we have HDFS. On top of that, we build the map reduce system. We have PIG, which allows multiple map producers to run. Mahout, which is a library. Hive, which gives you query, SQL query capability. Monitoring is Apache and Barry. Uzi is the workflow. Zookeeper is a concurrency control system used a lot in fault tolerance. HBase is the NoSQL database, which you can use. And then you want to do, a, well, you know what REST and ODBC and Spook are. These are data. Uh, data standards and used for be able to transport data between different places.